what's wrong with you? Let's go down to the shack and get a bear, huh? I'm broke. My old man wouldn't advance me any allowance. Hey, you think Joe will give us any credit? Are you kidding? Here comes Bill Leeds. Hey, Stan Osgood's having a party night over at his house. On the level. Yeah, I just drove by his house and all the cars on. <laughs> What are you waiting for? Come on. Go, go, man. Hey, over. Man. Hey, that's a tough one to crash. It's up in the DA's office. So I invited you. Dance bar. No, Josh. I think he's in the den. This one? Oh, I'm sorry. Hi, Sharon. Have you seen Josh? Oh, I think he's out in the garage looking at Stan's new boat. Boat. I've been thinking of pretty seriously about an Eastern school. I don't know. No, I'd go to Harvard if I had the grades. Josh! It's my signal. I'll see you inside. Yeah. Let's go. It's early. Okay. I'm bored. Bored? I only left here for a couple minutes. It's not it, it's just a little dull around here. Well, let's go out to the club. I'm tired of the club, Josh. Well, what do you want to do? I don't know. Is it something I'm doing? Okay, what is it? I don't know, Josh. Now, can we go, please? Hey, where's Stan? He's out in the garage. What's up? 
Twig and his gang just crashed the party. Twig Webster? Yeah. Where is he? He's in there, I guess. Oh. Hi, Larry. Oh, hi, Stan. I invited him, Stan. Come on, Larry. Hey, man. Hey, how you going, Phil? Oh, good. Good. Hey, good. There you go. Move over. Hey, what are you doing, man? Hey, where's the ice? Where's the ice? Where's the ice? Hey, last back here. We got all sorts of here. Hold on, let's go. Where's Twig? He's in the den. Shall we um, throw him out? No. No rough stuff. You know, my folks will be coming back. Well, it's your party. I, I mean, he'd be all right, you know, but he always goes Pardon so me. Pardon me. I'm sorry. Ah, there's our host. I have to commend you on your father's stock. It's excellent, just excellent. Right here. Now, if I can have those sandwiches, please. Thank you. Anything wrong, Stan? Well, I... <laughs> it, it's, it's strictly a date party, no, no stags. Oh. Well, if I see any stags around, I'll kick them out, Stan. <laughs> hey, Trey, try these drinks for size. Yeah, hey, how about a drink at that time, Stan? Whoa, big man. Look, Stan. <laughs> uh, Stan, say, Stan, why don't you put some music on so we can dance, huh? Let me have a drink. Come on. Yeah, hey, come on. Get the high five on. Let's get the dancing, man. Let's get the party. Hey, let's talk about something. Hey, let's talk about something. Hey, let's talk about something. Hey, let's talk about Give me another drink, okay? Wait, hey, we're out of beer. Hey, man, get some beer, man. Here, hey, 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 hey
I still don't see why you're mad at me. I didn't start the fight. It was crazy. It was a little bit sick, if you ask me. It was different. Does that make it good? It's like an animal. Twig. You know who I'm talking about. He is like an animal. Don't knock it. Good night. I'll see you tomorrow. You better call me first. It's Sunday. I know. for you. I just couldn't sleep. Did you have a good time? Yes. say anything to him, did you? I mean, a boy his age, three o'clock's not bad. It looks like he's been in a fight, and he seems very disturbed. That's not like Josh. What'd he say? Went in his room and closed the door. Ted, Ted, go in and talk to him. Oh, honey, honey. If he wants to talk, he'll come in and talk to us. He's not a baby anymore. Well, he's not a man, either. Oh, you just got any secrets, have What? Nothing. 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 some sirens about an hour ago. <clears throat> that have anything to do with you? No. Well, wait a minute. I'm back here. I want to talk to you. 
About what? Your allowance. Your mother tells me that you want $20 a week. Ten isn't good enough for you. Here we go again. Hey, wait, wait a minute. I saw you. Thought it was ginger ale. Ginger ale, huh? You let me smell your breath. That's okay. I uh, <clears throat> just wanted to check. That's all. Now, uh, about your allowance. Mom promised me I could depend upon transportation at least. Uh, if you get grades. If you get grades. I mean, transportation shouldn't cost you more than a hundred a month. What do you put in that car, Ethan? Look, I could buy a new car with all the empty bottles around here. Listen here. Don't you throw up to me what I do, huh? That can't be your mother, can it? And she went to a movie with her cousin Luella. I mean, Luella wouldn't leave her off down the corner, would she? Sir? Son, wait a minute. Um, shake hands with your father, huh? Shake on it. You, uh... You got your 20 coming, so, uh... Well, it'll have to be uh, Wednesday, though, huh? Yeah. Wednesday. Hi. Hi. Now what? You teaching him his homework? Can I go? Twig bite. No, it's late, Hazel. You better let him go to bed. She out of this. Don't you give me a good night kiss anymore? Why don't you let him give you one for me? You asking for a slap? Oh. <laughs> now, you remember, I won the last time you did that. Calling juvenile hall. Well, what else can I do? I can't slug my mother. Give me a kiss. I don't get many, you know. Well, aren't you going to ask me where I've been? I don't care. Got a pretty good idea, though. Are you insinuating? Don't have to. It's pretty obvious. You filthy, rotten liar. You like to think those things about me, don't you? Don't you? Leave me alone, Hazel. You don't say them. You just suggest it. You don't dare say them, because you know they're not true. So you plant it, just enough to insinuate. Because you're not a man. Because you can't give me one minute's happiness. You like to think those things about me. <laughs> but you can't come out with it. You're a tramp. I told you before it, and I'll tell you again. Don't be snide with me. Stop snide remarks. Do you have to go to the office on Sunday? We have to eat, don't we? <laughs> Morning. Morning, Josh. Oh, I'll get your breakfast. No, it's okay. I'm going over to Barbara's. Good morning, Mr. Nickerson. That's right, it's Josh. Oh, uh, no, no, don't disturb her. Um, tell her I'll be over in about 15 or 20 minutes. I'm leaving right now. <laughs> okay, okay. Goodbye. Josh. New coat, huh? No, it's, it's an old one. Can I drop you off at Barbara's on the way down to the office? Okay. We're leaving now. Now, don't stay down all day. I won't, dear. Josh, will you be home for dinner? 
I think so. Bye. Big night last night, hmm? Yeah. Something special that kept you out so late? No. You know, Josh, you're old enough now. I don't feel I have to check up on you. Of course, I could be wrong. Everything under control? You should have enough money by now to buy that car, huh? Next week. Next week I'll have enough. Then I'm gonna quit. I don't blame you. Working after school's a pain. It seems like I've been working after school all my life. What kind of car are you gonna get? Well, I'm not sure if I'm gonna buy one or not. What do you mean? I thought that's why you're working, saving your money. Yeah, it was. It's so hard to tell where I'll be. Uh, after I graduate school, I may get drafted into the Army. And if I don't, get a deferment, I might go away to college somewhere. Um, it's too tentative. Get the car. You can't tell. If you go in the Army, you might be stationed somewhere nearby. You can make use of it. Maybe I will. Get it. Then if you do have to sell it, well, I'll make up the loss for you. Might even buy it myself. You in a sports car? Say hello to Barbara and the Nickersons for me. morning drink I endorse. It uh, picks you up and makes you fly right, if you know what I mean. You had a big night, huh? Well, I'm afraid to call the club and find out. You see, I woke up this morning, and there in my dresser was a beautiful silver cup for the Mambo contest. I wish I could remember whether I won it or stole it. <laughs> oh, Josh, the uh, coffee's not ready. Do you like some orange juice? The man doesn't like to drink alone. Yeah, I think so. A double. Um, uh, Mrs. Nickerson is writing another speech. Coffee's ready. Hi. Hi, Josh. Well. May I help you with that? I... Good looking. Say, let me do something for you. Where do you want this? I'll put it there. Coffee table's okay. Okay. Stunning. It'd be stunning. Now let me look at you. Uh, may I? <laughs> How am I doing? You can do much better than that, Father. Come on. Mm -hmm. I better make the waffles. Not another speech again. In my opinion, you are a smart boy and a good sport. I hope I'm right. What's the build-up? Now, Ted, you stay out of this. Josh, Mrs. Nickerson makes the speeches, but I am a man of action. And what is about to happen, I arrange, and I expect you to act accordingly. Now, Barbara had her doubts, but I insisted. Uh, Twig, I think you remember my father, don't you? And, of course, you know Josh. Yes, I think we have met. How do you do Yes, sir? we met last year at the track meet. Now, I'm a man of few words, so I'll come right to the point. Barbara told me what happened last night, and well, it sounds like good, clean fun, but I think both of you boys should bury the hatchet. I want you to shake hands. And then we'll all sit down to one of my famous and celebrated waffles. All right, 
Josh. This is one of those moments where they separate the men from the boys. Well, oh, that's more like it. Jim? I've got it. Jim, I think I've finally got it. I want to try it on you. Teddy, will you please keep that dog quiet? It's to be the keynote speech, and there'll be delegates from six states, and the speech has got to be right on the notes. Mother, this is Twig Webster. Twig, this is my mother. Well, our home is always open to Barbara's friends. How do you do? Josh can vouch for that. I'm going to call the speech The Natural Grain of Life. I think it's terribly important. Well, why don't you read it for us, dear? You couldn't find a better audience. After all, your subject is the teenager today. It might be interesting to get their reaction. It might even be helpful. Oh, come on, sit down, sit down, everybody. Make yourselves comfortable. Josh, sit over there. Twig, sit over there. Come on, sit down, sit down. All right, darling, go ahead. I've hit the problem right on head. Well, all right. The denial to our children of a natural way of life is the great tragedy of the mid-20th century. The age-old pattern of birth, growth, the fulfillment of one's role as a wife and mother, or husband and father, can no longer be guaranteed to the young people of today. Over their heads hang the uncertainties of the atomic age. We must convince our young people by our every thought and deed that we adults have no intention of destroying their world. Bravo. Bravo, bravo. I like the one last week when you said the problems of the teenager were due to speed. I think Ted's right. I liked it better when you pointed out that every teenager should have a horse and buggy. Your waffles are burning. Really? Give me a hand, darling. If we hurry, we can still get in nine holes. You know, they're having a session down at the shack. Oh, Josh, why don't we go down there? Well, if that's what you want to do. What have we got to lose? Fine, we can go in my car. No, I, I think we'd better meet you there. Oh, uh, we'll follow you, Twig, okay? Okay. I have to stop by my house anyway. What is this? What do you mean, what is this? What's wrong with going down to the shack? There's nothing wrong with going down to the shack, but I thought that you and I were going steady. I don't see anyone around but you, Josh. Barbara, you know what I mean. We're meeting Twig there. I'm going with you. Is it any different when we meet Stan or one of your friends? I just thought we were going to the club. I know. Every Sunday we go to the club. Every Friday night, Josh, we go to the club. And every Saturday night, we have a party. Will you tell me what's wrong with doing something different once in a while? That's not the point. What is the point? Let's be honest, you're steamed up about Twig, aren't you? Of course I'm steamed up because of Twig. What is this with Twig all of a sudden? I just want to have a little fun and you make a federal case out of it. How can I finish this speech with you two standing there arguing? Why don't you go over to Josh's house and drive his mother crazy? Are you going with me? Okay. Let's go. That must be Phyllis. For once, she's on time. Where are you going? To a movie. Just you and Phyllis? Yes, just me and Phyllis. <laughs> You'd like to think I was stepping out on you, wouldn't you? Since when do you get dressed up like that just to go to a show? Well, if you're so smart, you tell me. If I'm not going to a movie with Phyllis, where am I going? Now, here Ed's in town. Staying at the Lodge Motel. I understand he's given a big party tonight. <sighs> That's the price I have to pay for being married to someone so unpopular. We never get invited anywhere. 
And I have to go to a movie with Phyllis. Mom and Phyllis go. Who knows? Maybe she went to visit her grandmother. Oh no, she hasn't got a grandmother. Said she was going to the movie. Maybe she went to visit her cousin Tess. Has she got a cousin Tess? Well, you're doing all right. Don't get smart with me, will you? It's a fine household. Even a maid won't work here. Dad. Look up. I'm in a jam. You don't have to tell me you're in a jam. You don't call me Dad unless you want something. Maybe I want something, too. Maybe I want to have something to live for. Maybe I'd like to see your mother in the kitchen. What's so corny about making breakfast and serving dinner? What's wrong about coming yes. up? What did you want? came home for something. What is it? I'm broke. I need some money for gas. There. Thanks. Where are you going? I'm going to the shack. Why? Well, everybody in town has been talking about the gang that broke up the Osgood house last night. <clears throat> I don't want you crashing any more parties, you understand? Okay. If you crash that big party tonight, I'll sell your car. I'll take it away from you. What party? I don't even know what party you're talking about. You know about the big party. I don't know about the big... Don't lie to me. Every decent kid in town will probably be there. Maybe if you learned to act like a gentleman, they'd invite you. Well, I'm just a chip off the old block. I'm warning you. If I hear that you went even within one block of the large motel, I'll not only take your car, I'll cut off your allowance. Do you understand? Well, do you understand? <laughs> to leave last night. Stan was out of his mind. The cops are going to even pinch Larry, but then Stan's folks drove up. You should have seen Stan's father. <laughs> he must have blown his top. No, he was scared. He didn't even want to come in the house until the cops assured him everybody had left. <laughs> yeah, he looked at me like I was wearing a leather jacket and had switchblades in every pocket. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Did you get a hold of Stan? Hey, are you sure he's the one who called the cops? He's the one who called him. Hey, come on, Larry, let's dance.
Josh, come on, you've owed me a dance for years. Okay. I don't see a waiter anywhere. I'll get one. How come you always get straight A's? You're not gonna hold that against me, are you? I always figured you for the science club or the vice president of the inter-students council or... I'm the secretary treasurer. Welcome to our side. I have to be convinced. I'll pick you up tonight at 7. Well, we'll see, okay? Josh? Maybe. Hedging. I'm not sure you. What's your rush? Go each day. What else is there? Proof. <coughs> Good, Sharon. We'll catch you on the tip the next time. Hey, uh, we better drink slowly. This is the last round. I've got a couple of dollars. And that won't even get us through dinner. Dinner? Who wants dinner? I'm thirsty. I want to have a ball. I could go to my house, except the folks are going to be home. Oh, forget it, dude. Oh, honestly. Gee, I don't know whether my folks are home or not. That's not the answer. Now, look, I just remembered there's going to be a big party at the lodge tonight. Who's giving it? Now, who cares? How do you know? Because my old man said, if I catch you there, I'm going to cut your throat. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it's Esther Reese. I heard she was having a big blowout this weekend. Look, it doesn't matter whose party it is. It's going to be a big one. It'll be a ball. Now, let's go, huh? Well, I can't go anywhere dressed like this. I've got to go home and change. Oh, you're trying to wear your dress. Your dress. Skirt, no hey, did you hear about a party at the lodge tonight? Nothing, nothing at all. Lodge, isn't that near the lake? It's about 30 miles. 610. We got nothing but time. What do you say? It's gonna be a ball. It's the first time for everything. Josh doesn't want to go. You can go with me. Or right, Larry. I didn't say I wouldn't go. And besides, like Barbara said, there's gotta be a first time for everything. doing it's 20 to 7 we don't have time to talk I haven't decided if we're going or not you mean whether you're going or not the whole thing is very ridiculous then don't go I don't want you to I'll go with twig or Larry I didn't say I wasn't going look Josh I don't want to make you do anything you don't want to do if you're not there by 7 30 I'll know you're not going okay You know, sometimes you act like a ten-year-old. If I'm acting like a ten-year-old, then they all belong in kindergarten. Listen, they're the real squares. Josh, are you coming with me or not? I don't know. just coming into the house. Well, I wish you'd get here. How many times do I have to tell you? Stanley's mother called me. I didn't call her. They had the police there. Honey, I'm not gonna tell Josh who he can go out with. Besides, I haven't got time to check up on every move he makes. Well, when are you coming home? Well, I know, but frankly, darling, I could do with a lot less. I don't want to be the richest widow on the block.
I didn't expect you home so early. Is Dad still at the office? Why, yes, but if you'd like to talk to him, I... No, I, I just wanted to borrow the car. Oh. How soon do you need it? Well, I should be leaving right now. Oh. Heavy date? Yeah. Would you like to borrow mine? I know it's not very sporty. Yes, I would, if you don't mind. No, I don't mind at all. I'll get the keys. I know your father wouldn't approve of my asking, so you'll have to forgive me. But I would like to know, where are you going? Well, uh, I'm taking Barbara out, of course. And, uh, well, uh, we're going to a party uh, with Sharon and some of the other kids. I'm not sure where it is. Well, who's giving the party? Well, uh, I don't know. Uh, we're meeting with the other kids, and, and they know where the party is. Will it be at Barbara's house? No, no, I, I, I'm really not sure. Josh, I wasn't born yesterday. And I do give you credit for having good judgment. But all the same, I've got a right to be concerned. And it's quite obvious to me that you don't want to tell me where you're going. I'm going to a party, Mother, with Barbara and Sharon and all the other kids. And, well, what's wrong with that? Hello. I'm all finished up. I'm on my way home. Oh, good. I was just talking to... Uh, Clancy, can I talk to you for a moment? I'm busy. I get my allowance tomorrow and... No gas. This is a cash and carry business. Look, I don't owe you that much. Beat it. Go ahead. I've got news for you. You don't come up with the $64. That's what you owe me. By Monday at closing time. I'm going to put a lien on your car. Boy, what can you expect from a good smuggler? Listen, do you have any money? There's a bar. Hey, Twig, stands here. Hey, leave him alone, huh? Bring him over here. What are you trying to prove? This is going to be a good one. Hi, Sharon. Hi. Mom said you wanted to, wanted to see me. You don't fool me. What's the beef? I, I mean, if anybody should be sore about last night, it should be me. You called the cops. You think I'm crazy? Come on, get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. You want to fight? Go down the road. I don't want any cops around here. That goes for all of you. Hi, Barbara. Hey, do you know where the folks are? No, they didn't say where they were going. They left a little while ago. Some people picked them up. Mm. Okay, thanks. Hi, honey. Hi. Want a milkshake? A milkshake? Ted, there's chicken and roast beef in the icebox. Now you just go get some. There's lobster, shrimp, and jelly consomme. So what? I want a milkshake. Okay. Smells pretty good. How are things in the moon? Okay. Instead of going to school, you take a pill. 
A pill, huh? Sounds pretty good. Only you have to go to school in the morning, and since we don't have any pills, would you please see that you go to bed early? I thought nine o'clock. Okay? Okay. Oh, say, Mildred. Mm -hmm. I wish David gets to bed about nine. All right. And no television set. All right. Can I have a taste? Mm. Okay. Let's go. Mm. I'm ready. You are. Good night. Thank you. Good night, honey. We're not going to go in that. My dad wasn't home yet. Well, we better take ours. No, no. 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 It's the car I brought, and that's the car we'll go in. Talk about juvenile, Josh. I was just thinking of keeping up with the others. You don't need to worry about keeping up with the others. We'll do fine. We'll keep up with them. Look, if we're going to argue all night, let's not even go, huh? We're not going to have a bit of fun. You want to have a ball, right? Okay. Okay, we'll have a ball. We'll have a real ball. Hi, Clancy. Hi, how are you? Okay, let's get out of here. Hi, Secretary Treasurer. I want you to take Highway 96 over to that back road by Iverson's gas station. This buggy will carry you that far. Can we synchronize our watches? Has anybody found out who's giving the party yet? I was thinking how crazy it would be if it turned out to be somebody we know. Well, that's where the fun is. Anything can happen. When you get to the lodge, douse your lights. Okay, General. If you get into any trouble, why, throw the panic switch. Oh, that's a mad dress. Third period, home economics. You look very sharp. Thank you. I knew a little encouragement would bring you back to life. Find the action. We'll wait here. Got a cigarette? Yeah. I smoke her brand.
It's on the other side. Okay, let's go. Simpson stuff. That gag went out with high buttons too. Yeah, I go on. Hey, on the level. No, Mr. On the level, Glory, invite us. We must. So you want to crash our party, steal our girls, and drink our booze, huh? Go ahead, try it. Now look, no, look, look. We got in the wrong party. We made a mistake, and we're sorry. And we want to leave, okay? Uh, just a Come minute. On, on. Uh, you're invited to a party. You got to stay to the party, right, Crane? You can say that again. We're gonna have a little party. We're gonna have a party. Call the cops. It'll take them two, three minutes to get here. By that time, there won't be nothing left of your boyfriends. Just a minute. You said you invited to a party. We're inviting you to stay and drink our booze. And if you don't, we're liable to get insulted. And when we're insulted, there ain't no telling how we're liable to act. So come on, have a party. Now, have a party. Until we can get out of here, okay? There's got to be another way out. Now look, if I can get into the hallway, I might find a room that has a door leading to a balcony. Maybe I can start something. Leave my girl alone. Hey, wait a minute. Listen, everybody. What happened? What did you say? 
told you to leave my girl alone. We're gonna bring such rough fixes. Just a yeah? minute now. I'm his manager, and I'm telling you, he can't fight you because he can't make your weight. Go, go get him. Get him. All right, go, go get him. Now that's. Go I'll be right back. Hello, kid. What are you doing here? It's just getting a little air. Oh, what's all the noise in there? Hey, what is that? What's going on? Gone, kid. <laughs> put you up to this. Get out of here. Open that door. If we can get out the back way. I'm not going anywhere. I've got to get you out of here. Open the door. I don't want anyone to see you. You are not going anywhere. Now listen, I'll give oh, you my please, out here. Oh, Look, if we get out now, no one will know the difference. Come on, baby. Open the door. Let's go. Okay, now you meet me at the car. No, Josh, please. Do as I say! Come on. Do you have the keys? No. We better wait for Josh. No, we 
don't have time. Come on. Let me go. No, come on. Give me the key. I don't have the key. Come on. Give me the keys, Buck. Please, I need them. Get away from me. Get away from me. Check your car for keys. I know something. No, don't worry about me. I'm all right. Next time, take up a trade. I've got a trade. I told him I was in the lamp business. I can make a lamp out of anything. He's going to be all right. How could you be so sure? Yes. You heard what the sergeant said. They might release him. He's, he's going to be all right. If he wasn't all right, I'd have to get the attorney down here. He's still not facing it. What do you mean? We've failed, Josh. Well, Josh is... Josh is not the kind of a boy you could... Telling what to do, if he needs advice, he'll come to us. But he if... didn't come to us. At his age, he wouldn't ask. And what a relief that was for us. There's just not enough time. It takes an hour to get to work, you work all day, and it takes an hour to get home. You get home, there's always something to be fixed. Someone on the phone, something to see on television, and if I'm there, yeah. Judge... Ted, do you really want to help Josh? Of course I do. Then we'll find the time. After all, I'm not like the parents of some of those other poor kids. We'll find the time. It takes a lot of time to raise a boy, doesn't it? Miss Webster. There's no word on your son yet. I see. I have a report on your wife. She's at the Memorial Hospital. Her condition is critical. That's all they tell me. I, I could take a taxi there, I guess. We'll be glad to drive you. No, it's not necessary. My name is Bickford. I'm, uh, I'm Josh's father. It doesn't mean anything to me. Well, Josh was with Twig. I see. We're, uh, we're, we're sorry to hear about your wife. She's in the hospital. I, I know. I heard the lieutenant tell you. I could 
go down there, I guess. I don't know what I'd say to her. I could go straight home. I don't know what to do. Mr. Beckford? Yes? You processed your boy and we're releasing him. There's a charge against him from the motel, but you'll be notified. Thank you very much. They're releasing Josh. I uh, know. You can wait right here. He'll be out in a few minutes. Thank you. There's nothing to worry about, Mrs. Nickerson. She's all right. She's over at emergency hospital. They gave her a sedative. We're keeping her there. She's not holding her. After all, she's not a criminal. No, you can take her home until notified. Fortunately, the motel has not dropped the charge. Not dropped the charge? Are you being snide? Uh, not here, no. Save it for well, one of your speeches. I am. Where is the receiving hospital? Uh, it's across the street. Oh, yeah. uh, of course. I don't understand it, how she could have gotten so involved. Oh, geez, Josh. We were at the McKenzie's. We only just got home a few minutes ago. Uh, hey, Tell you the whole thing. Is there anything like we can do while you Thank you, Terry. It's like a nightmare. I just... Well, the kid's probably scared to death. We'd better go over there and take her home. All right. I hope she's better. Uh, I do, too. Give me a call, will you? Let's get together. Sure. Some place a little uh, cozier than this. Hmm? Bye. We'll see you later. Jim's right, you know. There has to be a better meeting place. Son. Yes. Yeah. Well. Josh. You look like you're all in one piece. I don't know what to say. Well, there's an awful lot that needs to be said. But it's a sense that this isn't the place to be saying it. Let's go. About ten minutes, I'll meet you in the car. Where are you going? Oh, I'm going to go in the hospital and see how Barbara is. Oh, I don't think I'd go up there. Her mother and father are with her. They're going to take her home. Well, if you don't mind, I'd feel a lot better if I saw her. How long will it take? About ten minutes. All right, your mother and I will wait in the car. Okay. And, uh, Josh. Ten minutes. From not asking him enough questions, don't start asking him too many. <laughs> Could you please tell me where Barbara Nickerson is? She's in receiving, right across the hall. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Webster. We did everything possible. You know, my... my son wouldn't have been there tonight if I hadn't sent him. 
She was right, Ellen was right. I'm, I'm no use to anybody. Not even to your son? My son? I lost his love and respect a long time ago. Then you'd better win them back. You're his last chance. How can I? It would be different if she was always... She wasn't always... Un She wanted to stay there. She pulled away from me and fell. Twig. Go along with the officers. They'll uh, want to know the details, son. Will you come with me? Luxurious jet stream featuring exclusive siesta sleeper seats. Fly the finest fly TWA jet stream service. This is your life has been presented by Pace, the first and only no lotion permanent. Costs no more than the lotion kind, only two dollars plus tax. Pace, new from Procter and Gamble. Get it tomorrow. And by Ivory Soap, 99 and 44 one hundredths percent pure. It floats. Thanks, Bob Warren. Ladies and gentlemen, to one of you watching this program, a shoe, a postcard, and a kerosene lamp have special meaning. You will be our principal subject on This Is Your Life next week. Your story is deeply moving and unforgettable. Don't miss it, ladies and gentlemen. Good night. This Is Your Life is a Ralph Edwards production produced by Axel Gruenberg and directed by Richard Gottlieb. Be sure to watch Loretta Young on most of these same stations every Sunday night.